So, I have played Act 1 of Ultra Kill. I've obviously seen all of the same videos that you have. Um, Max or plenty of live streamers have played it, content creators across uh, different languages and regions and stuff like that have played it. And I had a pretty confident feeling that I knew what to expect when it came from this game. Especially considering that I played a little bit of it at a friend's house. But absolutely nothing, nothing could have prepared me for the brutality that is this game and its speed. Me having played a lot of character action games like Bayonetta, Devil May Cry, and Vanquished, Revengeance, just to name a few, I'm familiar with the idea of a parrot system. And I've seen the memes, I've seen the videos of how excited people get when they find out that you can parry your own shotgun class. This game has tech in it that doesn't make sense to me. But I think that that's awesome. So, like I said before, um, I've played this game a little bit over at a friend's house, but never actually got my chance to play it hands-on. Now that I've been given the opportunity to play this game thanks to a time-traveling chipmunk, I was really, really excited to play what I was hoping would make me feel the same way that I feel when I play Doom 2016. And while I did feel something very close to that, something very in the same vein of the, the violent bliss that is Doom 2016's non-stop smooth combat, there was something about un, uh, un, something about Ultra Kill that just didn't didn't gel with me. The music is superb, very much so, and there it, the, the combat is very very satisfying. Let there be no mistake in my words that the combat feels very good. But there is something else that goes along with that feeling. Um, I understand that you're able to parry pretty much any enemy attack, excluding, uh, like, flamethrower attacks. But, there's something odd about the way the parry system works, and that is that it's, it's really fast, but the active part of your melee attack is almost a lie. It's not immediately active, so you don't immediately press it as you're being hit by something. It's almost as though your punch itself has a little bit of a travel time, and only when your hand is fully extended does the parry actually happen. And it, this isn't just limited to the parry system. <clears throat> there were a couple of times during this where I was attempting to pick something up, and that is the same button as your melee, but because I wasn't at a full standstill, or maybe because I was too far away, it just felt weird. I'm sitting there kind of punching the air, swatting for flies, and not picking up a key item that I need to open a door. And I have to make a mental note to stop, look at the item, get a set distance away, and then use my melee. And I didn't much care for that. All of that is to say that this game definitely feels like it's made on the Unity engine. And by that, I don't mean that it has a lot of... It's not technically broken, but it's also not designed that way intentionally. It is an engine limitation. And I'm probably going to sound relatively crazy, but I played a lot of Unreal Engine games. And the best way that I could put it is that the Unreal Engine is not meant to go this fast. There was another game that I am reminded of called Race the Sun, also on the Unreal Engine, and it also had the same kind of off feeling, where being very familiar with games of this type and of this speed, I have it in my head the way that it's supposed to feel, and the way that I think of the developers want it to feel. But all I can say is that there's something off. And it's not quite input delay, nor is it like a hitch in the frame rate. It's just, it feels like the engine is kind of struggling. 
And keep in mind, I played Race the Sun on console. I played it on PlayStation. And I could also, in that, feel like, oh yeah, no, you don't need to tell me that this is made on the um, Unity engine. I can, I can tell. With that being said, there's a little bit of, like, frustration when it comes to all of the combat. Because the game feels like it should be playing at a very comfortable 98.6 degrees. Fahrenheit. But it feels, when you're playing it, like a 97.84. It's not enough to be a health problem, but it's definitely enough that you notice it. And it makes me feel as though my accomplishments aren't skill-based, it's adaptation-based. What I mean when I say that it's adaptation based is that I'm doing pretty much all of the actions in this game with complete and total confidence. And when it doesn't work, rather than get caught trying to figure out why or go, oh that's not fair, because the game moves so fast, I'm very just quick. Like, if I go to parry my own shotgun shell and I miss, well, I was going to parry the second shot anyway, so I just do it again. And the second time works, but the first time misses. And I don't really have enough time to think about why it missed when I'm very confident that it should have hit. And that basically means that all of the victories are not yay, I did it. It's more like, oh, thank goodness I got it done. And... It's a very minor thing, but if you, you're the type of person to really seek out like maximum satisfaction from games like this, hopefully you'll have a sort of idea of what I mean. The, the, the feeling that I'm chasing upon accomplishment is something that the game isn't giving me, but I still feel like I earned it. And that's a little bit frustrating. I still very much enjoy the game, I think that it's fantastic, but if you put a gun to my head and said pick between this and Doom 2016, I'm, I'm picking Doom. I'm picking Doom. Now I will admit that I appreciate the fact that this game doesn't have very much downtime. So in Doom 2016, there is a lot of times where if you die, you have to wait for a death animation to play out, the menu will load up, you hit continue, and there's a pretty long loading screen before you get taken back to your last checkpoint. An ultra kill, uh, you don't have that. You die, and oftentimes there were moments where I didn't even fully process that I was getting a game over, but I just hit the button and continued from the very start. It's like, okay, I died. Instant right back into the action. And that did a lot to help keep me in my groove. You see, I'm a very rhythmic player. <clears throat> Even in games where you don't have to be. And it's a lot easier for me to just adjust my, my rhythm than it is to get completely taken out of it and then have to start from scratch. So being put through a long loading screen means that I have that downtime. I'm like... By the time the game loads back up, it's like, okay, what what speed was I playing at that got me the game over? And what's the speed that I need to play at to not get the game? Um, Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal had that a lot, where it's like, okay, I'm completely taken out of my groove, but with the speed that you just get right back in it with Ultra Kill, that's not so much of a problem. But there was an issue Again, I'm going to attribute it to the fact that this is a Unity game, where in between levels, I, I, was, I encountered a bug, and that bug, let's see if I can find it really quick. Yeah, you see here that I'm, I'm shooting, but it won't go to the next level. And as a result, I had to restart 
which meant redoing the level I just did. And that completely threw off my groove. And it took me a while to get back into it. Um, I was making mistakes that I wouldn't have normally if I was able to just continue with the pace and tempo that I had left off at. Also, there's the the combat in this game, again, can't, can't state enough how good it is. But there's a lot of awkward moments where you have to search for like items in order to, pro to progress. The game doesn't do this very well. Because the way that the geometry is made, and the way that the movement is, it means that you're trying to do like a Mega Man wall jump to get to greater heights and then dash from that height. And it the the distance and the speed at which you have to hit the jump button when you make contact with the wall is just deceptive. Um, there was a moment where I'm I'm in the level and I'm just I'm just trying to jump off of the wall onto a platform that there are enemies because the enemies are at a higher height than me and for whatever reason I'm in my head I'm making contact with the wall but according to the game I wasn't so I just land on the ground with my face against the wall looking like an idiot I look like an IGN player I am not an IGN player Here, take a look at this. You'll get an idea for what I mean. You see, I understand how a wall jump is supposed to work. And I know how the game wants me to do the wall jump to get to that, that platform. You see, I, I wanted to wall jump off of the side of that circle-y thing. It's not working. Now, this seems like a pretty minor thing, but you have to remember that this is scored, and one of the areas that you're scored in is speed. So I was getting quite annoyed. I'm, I'm trying to keep the pace up, keep my momentum going, but um, fighting with some of the game's less important systems is hindering me. So again, it doesn't feel like I'm a skilled player. It feels like I'm an adaptive player in a game that wants you to be skillful. The last thing that I want to talk about is the boss fights. I, I think that the boss fights are actually excellent, genuinely fantastic. But unfortunately, the game is going so fast that I don't really have time to process what it is I'm looking at. Honestly, if I hadn't already seen more fun videos of this game from like people like Maxor or um, Shinpai, I really, like, I'm looking at the footage now, while I was playing this this boss, um, I, I wasn't even thinking about the, the design. Like, I, I just didn't have time. It was, quick, get your health back, quick, aim for the weak spot, uh, swap weapons, swap attachments, flick the coin, aim at the coin, shoot it. Okay, now, now quick switch to the shotgun, parry the, the blast, uh, avoid the blast from the enemy, the shockwave is coming, jump, dash over that get in the face. It, it's, it's so quick and so hectic that design is one of those things where you just really don't have time to appreciate it. Um, I feel like that might just be a me thing though and thankfully I have the recording to go back and look through and there's plenty of other people who have done videos and streams of the game that I can get a look at what what I'm facing. So the boss fights are cool, but from a design standpoint, I can't exactly say that any of them are memorable. And this goes for the Hideous Mass, V2, the Sword Machine, and unfortunately, Gabriel. Gabriel was an especially difficult fight that um, I, I was so determined to, to understand what attacks uh, were coming at me that I, I, I didn't have I don't know what Gabriel looks like speaking of attacks um, just because you know that only certain attacks can't be parried specifically the ones that flash blue 
the timing on some of these attacks, like, as they're coming at you, at what point in time are any of these things parable? Like, when are you supposed to melee it with these slashes and flashes that are coming at you a million miles a minute all the time? I don't know if you can parry Gabriel. I have not seen anyone parry Gabriel. I have not seen Max or parry Gabriel. Um, so this was another one of those fights where it's like, I don't feel like I beat it the proper way. I just feel like I got lucky and got it done. And that's not nearly as satisfying as saying, oh yeah, I beat him, no problem. And it doesn't inspire confidence moving forward if fights are only going to get more intense and faster. But all of that is to say that I think Ultra Kill is a fantastic game. I highly recommend it because it's a, it's a good price. It's made with passion. It's made with love. But it is a game that does have some issues and some flaws. Nobody wants to have to replay an entire level over again because of a loading bug or whatever the heck that was. But, um... I think that this is the type of game that I definitely want to see more of, and the type of game that I want to play more of. Because the good definitely outweighs all the bad, and I only intended to play it for maybe a half hour or so, and it wasn't even my first pick for games to stream, but it ended up being the game that I played the longest, and had the most fun with. So good on Nikita. I hope that they keep up the good work, and I'm not really worried about it because it's already a beloved game. And all I have to do is just finish it up. I don't know if at the time of recording the new act has been added to the game, but I know that it's scheduled for sometime soon. So that's something that people who are already a fan of the game can look forward to. Let me know what you think about my criticisms and my takes down in the comments below. I'm a very feelsy based gamer, so it can be kind of difficult to put into words um, how certain things are supposed to feel. And for anybody who hasn't played this game or hasn't played games like it, basically I talked nothing but pure and utter nonsense for quite a bit of time. But you have to understand that games like this rely heavily on feeling. So let's talk about it down in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all later.